तो वेलकम टू द वॉल्यूम स्प्रेड एनालिसिस बेसिक सीरीज पार्ट फोर एंड दिस इज गोन बी अ फाइनल वीडियो ऑफ आवर बेसिक सीरीज बिकॉज आई हैव ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन एवरी थिंग इन वन वीडियो ऑफ पार्ट फोर नाउ लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दट्स अ वाइक ऑफ बेसिक लॉ नाउ रिचर्ड वाइक ऑफ हैज क्रिएटेड दीज थ्री लॉज टू अंडरस्टैंड द मार्केट वेरी इफेक्टिवली लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड विद द फर्स्ट लॉ लॉ ऑफ सप्लाई वर्सेज डिमांड नाउ In simple, when demand is greater than supply, the price will increase, and the same thing when supply is greater than demand, the price will decrease. In simple, if demand is higher and supply is low in the market, price will increase its price. It will create a uptrend. Okay, same thing. When supply is increase in the market and demand is reduce in the market, market will fall. In simple, market. will create a downtrend now before understanding supply and demand law of supply and demand you have to understand that due to buyers and sellers supply and demand is being created if buyers are present in the market market will create demand and market will go up and sellers are present in the market market will create supply and market will create a downtrend it will go down okay to understand what is demand and supply If you don't know what demand and supply is also all about, I have given you a simple task. You can skip this if you want, but this is a very real life example. Simple face mask. I have given you a particular product, face mask. Now, before COVID, the face mask price is fifty rupees per mask. Okay, let's take it as an example. The face mask price is at fifty rupees per mask. Now, when COVID came in, price of every face mask increased to hundred rupees. Why is that? because the buyers as a retailers normal well, say as a retailers we wanted the mask due to government suggestions that we had to prevent covid so everyone should use mask so we had a rule and basically everyone wanted mask let's say millions of people wanted mask and there was only like let's assume only 1 uh, lakh or 2 lakh or 3 lakh mask right there in production so what happened right there supply was not present in the market demand was increased in the market so price also increased okay and same thing when after 2 3 months covid and post covid times the manufacturers the people who make face mask in industries they knew that mask is in demand right now so let's make more mask means let's increase the production they increase the production and right now supply increase right here when supply increased the mask price came back to 50 rupees why is that simple if supply increased lot of other sellers out there jo retail sellers they came in they buyed all the mask and uh, let's assume there is one person out there one seller out there who is selling one mask for 100 rupees there is another person out there who is selling the mask for uh, let's assume 70 rupees so as a buyer where would you buy the mask obviously the 70 rupees guy why because you are getting for 30 rupees lesser than the 100 rupees guy right so that's the same thing when supply is increase in the market demand decreases and market jo price of the market falls down same thing the price of face mask went down i hope you understood the law of demand and supply with this particular example now i have given you a particular chart right here to explain the most important topic same thing when demand increases in the market supply decreases when supply de- increases in the market demand decreases we know that right so what is this equilibrium point this is one of the most important point and based on this we are going to take the trades in psa in simple let's say that demand is plus 50 and supply is minus 50 okay 50 now demand is going from there's a scale right here let's assume demand is going from demand is reducing and supply is increasing in this particular scenario let's assume demand is plus 50 then it becomes plus 40 Plus thirty, plus twenty, plus ten, and zero. When demand become becomes zero, same time supply minus fifty, minus forty, minus thirty, minus twenty, minus ten, and zero. Now this zero is our equilibrium point. Then demand goes to minus and supply goes to plus. Same thing. One demand went from uh, plus twenty, plus ten, zero, and minus ten, minus twenty, minus thirty, minus forty, minus fifty. same supply went from minus 50 minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 0 plus 10 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 matlab is plus 
plus 20, plus 30, plus 40 and plus 50. This zero point right here, this is our equilibrium point and based on this particular point, we're going to take the trades in the volume spread analysis. I hope you understood the law of supply versus demand. Now let's move on to the next law. Now the law of cause versus effect. In simple, market always needs a cause to create an effect. Okay, let me explain you in the form of charts right here. Now this is one of the charts I've explained previously in the market phases and accumulation zone, re-accumulation re zone and distribution zone and redistribution zone. In simple, this is our cause and the trend is our effect. Okay, now market has created a cause means that market has, uh, let's say market is observing the volume right here. Okay, market is observing the volume right here. Market is resting right here. Once it knew that supply got decreased or demand got increased, it hold it for a little bit while. So market created a cause even for a momentum. Whenever there is a sideways market, the absorption takes place in these particular levels and that is our cause. Once cause completes, we will get a momentum. It could be an uptrend or a downtrend. We don't know about it. But this particular momentum towards any side will is our effect. So when there is a cause, due to that cause, we are having an effect. Cause was created, effect was executed. Then after effect, again, cause was created, effect was executed. Same thing in distribution zone. Market has created a huge cause. You had a huge effect. Okay, simple little market has created a little bit cause right here and again it created a little bit cause right here again it created a little bit cause right here so combinedly market has given us a aggressive momentum towards downside okay you have to think market is like a marathon runner okay well, let's assume you're running uh, 10 kilometers okay you're running 10 kilometers and let's say you can't run 10 kilometers directly you have to you're gonna run for two kilometers then you're going to take the rest right here for like for uh, for the next uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. Then you're going to re recover your energy. Then you're going to go uh, start running after the after the two kilometers, you're going to go to the four kilometers. Then you're going to take a little bit of time. You're going to rest for a while. Then you're going to start your journey again from four kilometers. You'll directly go to eight kilometers. Then you're going to rest a while. Then again, after eight, you'll reach a 10 kilometer. You have reached your destination. Once you reach the destination, it's over then market the other party gets in and you are going to go back again in simple you have to understand that market is just like human okay the more the market runs the more market wants to take uh, a break okay so i hope you understood cause versus effect in simple sideways market is your cause and the trending market is your effect okay I have explained a lot about it in the webinars. Actually, I've just given you a particular example because this is only a basic series. I want to keep this particular video very short. So our law of cause versus effect is completed. Now let's go to the law of effort versus result. One of the most important concepts you have to understand. Now law of effort versus result in simple. Let's understand this particular law of effort versus result with an example of a drawing. So right now I have a drawing right here. I have drawn very like sorry for the drawing. Actually, I draw it in the mouse. So these are let's assume these are upper bars and these are the volume. Let's assume this particular volume is our effort and this is the result. Okay. In simple, let's understand effort versus result in the form of a real life example. So let's assume you're a student. Okay, you're a student, you're studying in a college and you have a particular test or exam that's coming on. And uh, in this particular exam, you have uh, your favorite subject and uh, you want to score 80 marks out of 100. Okay, so to score 80 marks out of 100, you start studying. Okay, you start studying for one week, you prepare for that particular subject and uh, you put on your effort. Okay, you have created an effort right there. You studied for one week completely, then exam day came in and you have uh, completed the exam then after one day two day let's assume after a week or two weeks you got the results now you have created an effort you have put all your effort right there to get the particular result for 80 marks of preparation you should get 80 marks right so that was your expectation as per your effort now results came in there are two scenarios right here first thing 
the first scenario is that for 80 marks preparations you got 80 result 80 marks result okay the second uh, scenario right here is for 80 marks preparations you got only 70 or 60 marks right here why is that is there a reason yes definitely there might be some sort of reason probably uh, some handwriting issues or some you might have missed one or two questions we don't know about it right so you had two scenarios first thing everything was in harmony you prepared for 80 marks and you got 80 marks the second scenario you prepared for 80 but you got 60 or 70 now same thing markets buyers and sellers the participants they created 100 points volume right here for 100 points per volume they got first first time they got 10 points momentum fair enough let's assume this is a fair enough again same time they've created 70 points volume again they got seven points momentum so they created effort of 70 points they got a result of seven points so if this was the effort and this was the result okay uh, as i explained to you buyers are the, and sellers are the people who move the market now they created effort they got the result fine now on the third scenario on the third bar they created only 50 uh, 50 points of effort but they got 12 points of result is there a divergence right here definitely so this was on harmony the 10 points and 7 points were on harmony this harmony had a little bit difference so there was a divergence right here so this is how we're going to judge the market whether a market is about to reverse or not okay so effort versus result is nothing but when the whenever there is a divergence in the harmony you can expect a particular reversal or you can expect a change in the market's momentum and its structure okay so let's understand this with the form of an chart right here um, this is a tata motors chart of 15 minute time frame now let's compare this all the particular bar chart with the volume right here okay and here we have a divergence right here the first bar this is the green bar the upper bar right here and look at the volume of this particular bar and compare this particular one volume with the, all the other bars and let's spread the spread is almost similar to this particular bar right the spread is similar to this particular bar right here the 14 the middle of the two o'clock bar the spread is similar to two o'clock bar but the volume look at the volume this is a less volume but for this particular bar it's a more volume so there is some sort of divergence in the markets the second bar if you are comparing with this bar and this bar the spread is higher in simple the effort of sellers and buyers are higher right here but similarly the result is less right here so technically we are having a divergence in the market so once we had a divergence in the market we can expect a change in the market scenarios and as expected we had a reversal right here okay and right now i have given you one more example right here to understand simple the buyers and sellers they have created to so much effort right here they got a result fine but as per the compared to the first bar you had a small reduction in your effort but result was completely less so there was some sort of divergence right here so based on that we had a momentum in the market so this is a smart money's activity i'm going to explain that how to trade even these things we can trade all these things but let's understand the theory right here of effort for the result the effort was higher the result was less and market had a divergence and market changed its particular structure based on the change in harmony okay i hope you understood the law of effort was a result okay i have given you only two three examples in webinars i give more than 10 examples to understand but this is only the simplest thing because of basic series now the final concept trades in vsa you're going to understand how we're going to take the trades in vsa now a lot of people out there they might be thinking that only based on law of supply versus demand or law of cause versus effect or even by effort versus result you have found a divergence right here and you have found a reversal point once you had an effort and results can you take a buy trade or a sell trade definitely not don't do that mistake okay because in vsa we go through a lot of confirmations even before taking an entry and those entries are very high probability entries and we are having a, around like 8 or 9 out of 10 trades target heads. That's the high probability trades. Now let's understand trades in VSA. First thing we're going to look in the markets is the smart money activity. The FIRs and DIs present in the markets. 
simple let me show you in the charts so this is our trading view terminal and this is our adani ports chart and right now let's understand the smart money activity you know how smart money moves right like i already explained you in the previous videos i i hope you understood the mechanism of stock markets video but right now you have to understand that smart money presence is always very clear in the markets all the ultra high volume activity let's uh, close the price right here look all the this is a volume right here all the ultra high volume activity these are smart money presence the fis and dis they are the ones who can create these much of volumes right now can you trade based on these particular volumes definitely yes lot of trades based on we will be taking based on these particular trades these particular volumes now this is a smart money presence in the markets once smart money entered the markets they dumped all the sellings and market went down right here to understand how smart money works in the markets simple what you going to do is you going to draw a line on the high and low of the smart money the high volume bar and just look at the observe the price action around the bar simple after rejection again reaction market went up same aggressive momentum towards downside but market reacted so beautifully right here same thing happened right here same market reacted these levels again market reacted here they given as a close below the levels and again same thing happened again and again market didn't even cross these levels they went up to these levels they tested to all these levels market went down every single approach in vsa is a calculative strategy i'm not doing anything that's illogical in vsa okay every single thing we're going to trade these particular points we're going to trade these particular points we're going to even going to trade these particular points we're going to understand the market we're going to understand the smart money and based on that we're going to create entries okay i hope you understood this presence in smart money just as an example i have given you this go ahead back to set just draw draw the high and low of the particular uh, high volume activity bar and look at the markets yourself i hope you understood smart money fi and di presence in the markets that's the first point second point so what are you going to look in the markets is the volume levels this is one of the levels i have given in the webinar i am not i'm not going to give this particular topic in the basic series because i want i want to give this particular topic a lot of weightage first thing second thing there are a lot of rules and regulations even to follow this particular concept of volume levels so you don't need any indicators or anything just based on purely uh, volume uh, activity in the markets we're going to draw the levels and uh, trust me we will let's assume there is a resistance point and you are already on a buy trade your trade is reaching the resistance point once it reaches the resistance point you're going to book your targets i'm sure about market will reverse from the same point exact reversal you're going to get on the volume levels these are a very strong concept of volume levels and based on those particular concept we're going to take the trade the third point is the demand and supply divergence equilibrium points as i expected we're going to understand the demand and supply we're going to take trades on the equilibrium point once we have a particular uh, place where we know that demand is completely being to uh, getting to zero and supply is increasing we're going to go for a sell trade right there at the same time when supply is re reducing to zero and demand is going on a plus sign we're going to take a buy trade at this particular point and market will definitely give us a good, really good momentum from the exact same point where we are trading now that's the demand and supply divergence now it's fourth thing cause versus effect identification the one of the most important concept because we can't trade on every single market situations we have to understand the previous price action we have to understand what's happening in the market based on that we have to judge the smart money presence volume levels demand and supply every single thing then we have to take the trade so cause versus effect is also one of the most important concepts now we are judging the effort versus result divergence point now i hope you understood effort versus result so based on the harmony between price and volume we're going to judge the market whether market is weak or is strong is there any divergence where market might about to reverse or not so based on these particular uh, reasons we're going to take the trades 
So all these five points, smart money, volume levels, demand and supply divergence, cause versus effect identification, effort versus result divergence points. Based on these things, we're going to take the trades in VSA. And the upcoming videos, it could be a live market analysis. It could be some stock market, well, let's say swing trading. Swing trading videos, if I'm uploading in the upcoming days, every single trades will be based on these five topics. Okay. I hope you understood how volume spread analysis works in the form of basics. I wish I could have given you more content based on volume spread analysis, but this is the end for basic series. All the other things, the signal of strength, signal of weakness, Wyckoff schematics, especially for swing traders who wants to take trades effectively in the markets based on accumulation and distribution zones. Every single thing I have given you in the webinars and the basic things, whatever it is, I've already given you right here. All you have to do is find the smart money presence and make sure you trade based on that as of now and follow the content which I'm giving you almost every single time in YouTube channel. So thank you so much. That's the end of the basic series and we'll see you in the next videos.